Hello and welcome to Focus. At the end of World War I, Hungary surrendered two-thirds of its territory. As a result, half a million Hungarians now live in southern Slovakia, with large populations also living in nearby Romania and Serbia. But Hungary recently passed a law that permits anyone who can either speak Hungarian or prove Hungarian ancestry can apply for dual nationality, much to the disapproval of Slovakia. It's now retaliated, bringing in its own law that states anyone who did apply for dual citizenship would lose their Slovakian citizenship. Now the tit-for-tat row has escalated between the two EU member states and could have major implications in Slovakian elections taking place this weekend. Well, our correspondent Ian Willoughby is standing by in Prague. Ian, how has this row manifested itself so far? Actually, this dispute has largely manifested itself in some rather fiery language. For example, the Slovak Prime Minister Robert Fico, he has said that Hungary is an extremist country exporting its brown plague. Brown plague is a biting reference to Hungary's fascist government during World War II. For its part, Hungary accuses Slovakia of hysteria. It says the heated reaction to its dual citizenship law is really all about the election campaigning in Slovakia. But Budapest could also be seen to be stoking this controversy. Recently, the Hungarians declared June 4th their National Unity Day. Now, June 4th is the anniversary of the signing of the Treaty of Trianon in 1920 after World War I. Under that treaty, Hungary lost over two-thirds of its territory, including to what is today Slovakia. And the law making that day a holiday speaks of a united Hungarian nation. And that is exactly the kind of language that inflames the Slovaks. And Ian, very quickly, if you can, how could this row affect the elections this weekend? Well, the, the diplomatic storm uh, has kind of uh, given fuel to some Slovak parties who have been exploiting the situation, uh, like Prime Minister Fico and his party, Smer, another party in the coalition government, the far-right and xenophobic Slovak National Party, have also been making hay with the situation. Their leader, Jan Slota, is a notorious firebrand, and he's well known for baiting Hungarians. He's been making other statements recently about, Hung about the uh, Hungarians and uh, it could benefit his party and, make, and help them reach a 5% uh, threshold to enter Parliament. All right, thank you very much indeed. Ilian Willoughby reporting there from Prague. Well, our correspondents have been to Slovakia to bring us this report. It's been 90 years since the breakup of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. The anniversary is a chance for the Slovak National Party, or SNS, to rally its troops ahead of elections. Kamano is one of the rare cities in Slovakia where ethnic Hungarians are the majority. Elsewhere, they make up just 10% of the population. The Hungarian authorities want to revise the Treaty of Trianon and consider us as foreigners on this land. But Slovak people have been here for 1,500 years when Hungarians were still riding lousy horses in Central Asia. The xenophobic party's been in Slovakia's ruling coalition for four years and has been tainted by a string of corruption scandals. For leader Jan Slota, playing the Hungarian card is an effective way to regain ground in the opinion polls. I'm here to defend the Slovak nation and Brussels should help to protect us against Hungarian expansionism. On the border with Hungary, the SNS has unveiled a monument commemorating the Treaty of Trianon, which officially ended the Austro-Hungarian Empire. For Kamala's Hungarians, it's a provocation. The problem isn't the Hungarian minority, it's the Slovak far-right who play on people's fears. All this is happening because of the elections. I'm sure we can live in peace here. Across the border in Hungary, the parliament has just adopted a law offering ethnic Hungarians abroad the chance to get Hungarian citizenship. Slovak MPs have been quick to strike back. They've passed a bill under which any citizen applying for a Hungarian passport loses their Slovak citizenship. Veronica is an ethnic Hungarian student in Bratislava. She says the problem is, to some extent, artificially created by politicians. I have no intention of applying for Hungarian citizenship, and I don't know anybody who would. There's no reason to. Both countries are in the EU. Veronica has considered voting for the Most Hid, the first ever multi-ethnic party in the history of Slovakia and all of Central Europe. But the tense atmosphere in recent weeks has made life difficult for its leaders, who preach reconciliation. 
The ethnic question and all the traumas, prejudices and historical myths surrounding Slovak-Hungarian relations are topics that are very hard to debate rationally. An extremism on one side feeds that on the other. The results of the Slovak elections on Saturday and how the far right do in them will be important for future relations with neighbouring Hungary. The European Union recently expressed concern about these new tensions on the shores of the Danube, with Commission President José Barroso calling for constructive dialogue in a European spirit between these two member states. Well, Jack Rupnik, Research Director at Sciences Po University here in Paris, joins me in the studio for today's discussion. Welcome to France 24. This issue dates back 90 years. Why haven't Slovakia and Hungary moved on from it? Well, they have, of course, uh, but uh, um, politics uh, uh, is about using uh, available ideologies. Nationalism is the one both Hungarian and Slovak politicians consider the most readily available for mobilization. We have seen recently Hungarian elections where the right wing won, an extreme right wing, Jobbik party, uh, got 17 percent. These are parties that uh, basically claim that Hungarians living in neighboring countries should have a privileged relationship with Hungary. Slovaks now see this as irredentism, as trying to secede. And this brings back memories of the interwar period when Hungarian politics was entirely obsessed with revising the borders. And so basically you have there a historical legacy exploited by today's politicians. So what do you think uh, is, or what's your interpretation of its influence on the election this coming weekend? Well, there are two things. The elections would, under normal circumstances, be run on the economy, on, on the deficits, on how to cope with the euro crisis. Slovakia is in euro, Hungary is not. Hungary is in a major financial disaster uh, uh, right now. Uh, Slovakia uh, 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 tries to present itself as in slightly better off situation. But normally, this would be the issue of the election. Uh, on this issue, the current government May not, need, uh, uh, may not do so well. Therefore, the temptation to exploit the Hungarian question, because uh, this is a rallying call. Mm -hmm. We are all united behind our government, behind our leader, Mr. Slota, uh, uh, and uh, Mr. Fico, uh, to defend ourselves against Hungarian irredentism. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so. What do you think is going to happen this weekend? What do you think the outcome of the election will be? Um, well, no, nobody <laughs> knows exactly because the opinion polls uh, seem to suggest a very, very tight uh, race. But one option is the current coalition, thanks to the nationalist mobilization, stays in power. And uh, so this is Mr. Fico's sort of left uh, 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 party together with two nationalist extremist parties. Or you have an alternative possibility, variety of uh, right-wing parties, form a coalition uh, and oust the present government. Uh, that may be different in terms of economic policy, in terms of relationship with Hungary, I doubt it would make much change because their rhetoric in the campaign is just as tough against Hungarians as, as, uh, as it is uh, on the left, on the part of the we, government. We only have 20 seconds left. What do you think is going to happen next? Hungary takes uh, over the EU presidency uh, very soon. I think the EU presidency uh, should have a sort of sobering effect on both. I mean, it would, it would lead Hungarians to suddenly say, well, we, we, we cannot start a row with Slovakia or with other of our neighbors at the moment when we're taking over EU. We suppose as chairman of the EU to be the one who is the consensus builder. Let's start with building consensus with our neighbors. Okay, Mr. Rupnik, thank you very much indeed for joining us for this edition of Focus. Unfortunately, that's all we have time for. Do join us again next time. Bye-bye.